People think fat burning is all about exercise, that the only way to burn more fat is to go running, do loads of cardio, suffer while a trainer is shouting at you. One more. Listen, burning fat is about so much more. Surprisingly, you don't even need to exercise to burn more fat. Actually, in this study, people burn on average 326 calories more per day on diet number one compared with diet number two, even while eating the same number of calories and doing the same amount of physical activity. That means a lot more calories burned without adding any exercise. I know, pretty crazy, right? In this video, I'm going to share five practical science-based tips you can start implementing today to help you burn more fat without even needing to exercise. If you're looking to burn off some excess fat, this is exactly what you want. Now, I will talk about exercise as well at the end of this video because of course you can increase fat burning with exercise. Though a lot of people go about it the wrong way and end up getting trapped in having to do lots and lots of exercise just to burn enough calories. You don't want to do that. So let's talk about those five science-based tips to burn more fat. In case you don't know me, I'm Ingun, a Norwegian Viking and researcher sharing science-based no BS tips on losing weight naturally without suffering in the process. Subscribe to my channel, click that bell button and let's dive into fat burning. Let's take a look at a mind-blowing experiment. Three diets with the same number of calories, the same amount of fat, the same amount of carbs, the same amount of protein. The only difference was the type of fat used. This experiment was done with rats. So what happened? They gained very different amount of weight. Remember, they ate the same number of calories, yet their diet had a very different effect on their weight. Now, we all know that if we're gaining weight, it means that we're burning fewer calories than we're consuming. So in order for some of the rats to have gained significantly more weight than the others while consuming the same number of calories, it must mean that their calories out must have been lowered due to their diet, meaning their diet had a negative effect on their metabolism so that they ended up burning less fat. And the only thing that was different was the type of fat in their diet. Pretty crazy, right? Now you're probably wondering what type of fat made them gain the most amount of weight and whether this applies to us humans as well. Here's the thing. Different things have been blamed for the huge increase in obesity in the last few decades. We've been told it's because we're eating too much fat or too much carbs or too much sugar. Though actually the biggest change that has happened in the last century and that has never happened before in history is none of those. It's the type of fat that we consume. And no, it's not that we're eating more saturated fat, it's that we're eating a ton of vegetable oil. Most of them made from seeds and that are extremely high in polyunsaturated fat, especially linoleic acid. And these are the types of fat that cause the rats to gain significantly more weight, even while consuming the same amount of calories because it altered their metabolism and fat burning. And not only that, the way we consume these fats may also play a role here. I mean, the fact that these oils may be easily oxidized and damaged before we even consume them due to how they are made, stored and used in our cooking. Even that affects fat burning because the fat is already damaged before it even enters the body. That's what happened to these poor rabbits in this study. Those that got the oil that had been repeatedly heated and damaged ended up gaining significantly more weight, even though they ate less food. It's also found that linoleic acid in particular actually accumulates in our body, in us humans that is. And it's found that very overweight people have proportionately more N6 PUFAs in their bodies than leaner people. Linoleic acid is a type of N6 PUFA. Again, this suggests that there is a correlation between consuming these types of fat and gaining excess fat due to how it affects our metabolism and fat burning. And that's of course the opposite of what we want. In this video, we're talking about improving fat burning. So imagine if this type of fat is holding you back from efficiently burning off body fat. That's kind of a big deal, isn't it? So tip number one for improving fat burning is to avoid industrial vegetable oils, specifically those made from seeds. And know that these oils are everywhere. So make sure you read the ingredient list of everything that you're buying. And sadly, you can pretty much assume that any ready-made food that you're eating has been prepared with vegetable oil. Now there is a type of fat that may be especially important in order to keep burning fat efficiently, and that is a type of saturated fat called stearic acid. What happens if you don't eat enough of this fat? 
Well, after just two days on a low-fat vegan diet, this study found that fat burning decreased. And within just hours of consuming stearic acid again, fat burning increased. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, I would really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel. And click that bell button to be notified when I post new no BS videos. I also share lots of no BS weight loss tips on my Instagram profile at Viking Ingun. And if you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Send me a DM on Instagram or a comment below. So without that fat called stearic acid, it looks like fat burning decreases and it increases again if we consume it. So we're going to want to make sure we consume this fat, right? And where do we find stearic acid? In animal foods, dairy, and even in chocolate or more specifically cocoa butter. The point here isn't to consume a lot of stearic acid, it's just to not avoid it. So tip number two is to consume the more natural fats that we humans have been consuming for a long time, which means you'll be naturally consuming stearic acid as well. Now, when it comes to improving fat burning, two things are important. One, avoiding the things that can impair fat burning. Two, use specific tools to help improve fat burning. The thing is, people usually want to do only the second one. We all want that magic pill or magic solution that's going to solve all our problems for us without us actually having to change our habits. But we all know that adding broccoli to a junk food diet isn't going to magically undo the negative effects of the junk food. To have a real impact when it comes to our diet, for example, we need to remove the unhealthy food and add healthy food. And it's the same with our fat burning. If we want real results, real impact, we need to both avoid the things that can impair our fat burning and use the tools that can help us improve our fat burning. And that's why the five tips that we're talking about today has a mixture of both things to avoid or limit as well as tools that we can use. Because we don't want to get stuck putting in all that effort to burn more fat while some food that we're eating or habit we have is basically pulling us in the opposite direction. Now we have three tips left before talking about exercise two to avoid or limit and the last tip is a simple yet powerful tool that can help you burn more calories pretty much instantly first though another thing that can be more difficult for us to burn fat and is therefore something we should limit is stress and note that your body may be stressed even if you don't feel stressed the thing is when our body is stressed it secretes the hormone cortisol which due to several different reasons can lead to weight gain including how it affects our metabolism so tip number three is to limit stress easier said than done right again it's not only when you feel stressed that your body is stressed even your diet can be stressful to your body i talk more about this and give specific practical tips in one of my previous videos on belly fat because cortisol is specifically linked to belly fat so make sure you check it out if you haven't already i'll link to it in the description now tip number four is related to something that has been very misunderstood and that is carbohydrates. Wouldn't it be great to be able to enjoy eating carbs even while losing weight? Though a lot of people will tell you that carbs are the reason you gain excess fat to begin with and that it's preventing you from burning fat. Well again this has been very misunderstood and once you understand this and follow some simple steps you may be able to enjoy your carbs without gaining excess fat. Actually even while losing weight. Now, simply put, when we eat carbs, our blood sugar increases and we secrete the hormone insulin. And while insulin is elevated, it's like a signal to our body to not release any body fat to be burned and instead burn carbs in order to lower blood sugar back to normal levels. So in a way, very simply put, by eating carbs, we're preventing our body from burning fat. However, this is only temporary. It's only right after our meal while our body is still taking care of the carbs that we just ate. And actually, in a way, you could say that it doesn't really matter if we're burning mostly carbs or mostly fat right after our meal because we're burning off the calories that we just ate. So whether those calories came from fat or carbs is not really that relevant because afterwards we can go back to burning body fat. And that's the thing, our body is designed to be able to easily switch between burning carbs and fat. So even if we burn less fat after a meal containing carbs, after we burn off those carbs, our body can simply go back to burning fat. 
Of course, it's a lot more complicated than this, though for people with a healthy and well-functioning metabolism that eat a good diet, eating carbs is no issue and won't prevent them from burning body fat overall. Though the issue is that most people today are not metabolically healthy. And as I talked about in my previous video on cravings, it's been found that overweight people have what we may call impaired fat burning, making fat burning more difficult. And that's actually why we're talking about fat burning in this video, because you guys said you wanted a video on how to improve fat burning. So here it is. Share it with your friends. And if you have any other topics you want me to make a video about, let me know in the comments. If you haven't already watched that previous video on cravings, I hope you do as it explains more about the impaired fat burning and how it relates to carbs. Even though we should be able to easily switch between burning carbs and fat, not everyone is. And this is why tip number four is to temporarily avoid carbs. Actually, it's quite important that you only do this for a certain amount of time because carbs have some great benefits for weight loss and for health in general. Though avoiding carbs for a short amount of time can be one way to help improve fat burning in case your body is in a way favoring burning carbs. Again, see my previous video. You'll still need to address the rest of your diet if you want to improve your metabolism overall and be able to eat carbs again without having the same issues. Though avoiding carbs for a specific amount of time can in a way help you kickstart your fat burning. I know it may sound like a lot. I go through exactly how to do this step by step in my 90 day weight loss program called Slim by Science. So if you'd like a step by step approach based on science, then check out my program at Slim by science.com. Now we've talked about the type of fat we consume as well as the amount of carbs. Though the amount of protein you eat also affects your metabolism and fat burning in several different ways. Again, remember what we want here. We want to be able to burn more fat even without having to add any exercise. How can eating more protein rich foods help us do exactly that? Well, right off the bat, your body actually spends more energy, burns more calories digesting protein than it does digesting carbs and fat. So even right after a meal, if the meal was proportionately higher in protein, you'd be burning more calories. This is called the thermic effect of food. Another reason protein is especially good for fat burning while losing weight is that it helps us hold on to our muscle mass. And that's great even if you don't exercise. I mean, you don't need to be a gym rat to be able to take advantage of the muscles you have. We all have muscles, no matter if you exercise or not. And you're going to want to hold on to the muscles you have because because they burn calories even while you're resting. Actually, while you're resting, they especially love to burn fat. Now, when you lose weight, you may end up losing some muscle mass as well. So making sure you eat enough protein can help you hold on to more of those fat burning muscles. So tip number five is to eat plenty of protein. How much, you may be wondering? Well, it depends on your weight, your goal weight, your activity levels, etc. And actually, you don't need to weigh your food or count calories or anything like that in order to lose weight. Again, see my weight loss program called Slim by Science for step-by-step -step how to lose weight without counting calories or even needing to exercise. So we're told that the only way to increase our calories out, the calories we burn, is to move more, to exercise more. So from what we've just seen, our diet can actually have a huge impact on the number of calories that we burn. And even other parts of our lives like stress and sleep can also impact our fat burning. So when someone says that they're doing everything right, they're eating little, they're exercising a lot and still not seeing results, I would definitely want to look at what their diet actually consists of and if there are other factors impacting their fat burning, making it more difficult to burn off body fat and more difficult to lose weight and I would want to look at their exercise routine. Because yes, you can burn more fat by exercising. You can increase the number of calories that you burn if you include more exercise into your routine. However, it really does matter what types of exercises you do if you don't want to get stuck having to do lots and lots of exercise, even more and more in order to keep burning enough calories. You see, your body's always trying to adapt and optimize what you're doing on a regular basis. It wants to improve and get better at the things that you're doing. So let's say you go running on a regular basis. Your body will try to become more efficient at running by decreasing the amount of energy that you spend on this activity. So basically you have to spend more and more time running if you want to keep burning the same number of calories. Plus running is something that you don't need a lot of muscle mass to do. And muscles are heavy, so they slow you down in a way. So because your body is trying to optimize and become more efficient, 
it may even decrease the amount of muscle mass you have. Now remember, you want to keep those muscles around because they burn fat even while you're resting, even if you spend the whole day on the couch. So when you look at it like this, running doesn't seem like the best option, does it? And of course, this applies to cardio in general, not just running. Basically, with cardio, you'll be burning calories during your exercise, though for the rest of the time, you may actually be burning fewer calories if your muscle mass decreased. On the other hand, if you do exercises that help you grow your muscles, you'd be burning calories during your exercise, though more importantly, you may be burning more calories overall, because your muscles keep burning fat even while you're resting. Now there is a balance to be had here because like I said, your body is always trying to optimize. So it's important to not overdo it because your body may start to even burn fewer calories on other tasks. Though building muscles is about more than just burning calories. It has so many benefits, including for how you look and feel. And trust me, ladies, you won't look bulky even if you start to grow your muscles. I mean, do you think I look bulky? I'd say I have a good amount of muscles in there, though it certainly doesn't make me look like a bodybuilder. You can build a nice and athletic body with good amounts of muscles without looking bulky. Just note that you do not need to exercise in order to lose weight. I personally lost all the excess fat without exercising and only added exercise afterwards for other reasons. Now, no matter if you want to do strength training or not, you may want to consider walking as there are some great benefits with walking for weight loss. I talk about this as well as how much to walk if you're wanting to lose weight in my previous video on why I choose walking instead of running for weight loss, where I also talk about a very common mistake people make that defeats two of the biggest benefits of walking for weight loss. Check it out if you haven't watched it yet, I'll put the link in the description. Now, losing weight does take time and effort, though depending on how you approach it, you could be making it a lot more difficult for yourself, more misery and more likely to regain the weight afterwards because your metabolism slowed down and because you didn't fix what caused you to gain the excess fat in the first place. Or with the right approach, you could make it a lot easier for yourself, losing weight without suffering and in a way that helps you succeed, helps to optimize your body and helps you keep the weight off afterwards while you enjoy life, being able to go on vacation, enjoy your holidays without having it become a year long struggle to lose the weight again. If you'd like a step by step approach that guides you through everything you need week by week and that's actually based on science, then check out my 90 day weight loss program called Slim by Science at slimbyscience.com. I'll put the link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for lots more no BS science based videos on weight loss. I'll see you in the next video.